Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, and turn on notifications so that you will receive alerts when there are new episodes. Go get it. That's what I tell them. I've been grinding for so long, I wake up and chase my goals, I go out and I go get it, how to code, that's all I know, I don't succeed, then I don't breathe, success, what does it mean, if I conquer all my goals, then I'm living out my dream, dig deep, go out and get it, success chronicles, compete until it's finished, success chronicles, go take care of your business, success chronicles, it's deeper than just winning, success chronicles. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Coach. This is Chip Baker coming to you with another episode of the Success Chronicles. And I'm excited to have Coach uh, Todd Howie on with this great man doing some great things and uh, truly grateful. So, Coach, thanks so much for taking the time to interview with the Success Chronicles. Well, I appreciate that. Ask me. I've been watching your watching your career the last couple of years, Chip, on, on social media, and you're just doing some great things, man. You're everywhere. You're at FCAs. You're at coaching schools. You're at in gymnasiums. Just talking to volleyball teams, you're doing a lot of great things, and I appreciate that. I admire your, I admire your grit, man. You're getting after it. You're getting after it. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, let's let's dive into it. I know off air we talked a little bit about your journey and the things that you've been blessed to achieve, but if you don't mind, you know, sharing with the audience, you know, your story and who you are and what it, so they know who you are and what it is you do. Well, you know, I mean, I do. I, and I've been I, and I've been thinking about what to say on this podcast because I because I don't want to be I don't want to sound redundant, and mm. and 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 the older I I'll be sixty this year, and the older I get, the the, the more I realize the less I need, and the, and the less than I not necessarily the less that I want to do, but the less that I really need to do. And uh, I know one of your questions was, you know, what do you determine? What do you how do you define success? And I've been thinking about that, you know, and for me, I'm still trying to figure that out. I mean, I think there's achievement and there's success. And I've been I, and I in, in coach I, you know I've I've been a, in coaching baseball I've won some championships and I've lost some championships you know I've I've won some awards and I've lost some and I didn't win some certain awards I've had some really good jobs being an athletic director of some great school districts I've been blessed to have great people working around me so to me those are achievements uh, and so what I'm trying to do in my life right now is, is find success and and for me anyway I may be jumping ahead of it for me anyway success. And achievement are two different things, you know, and success for me is being the person that I hope to be. And, uh, and I'm still trying to figure that out. There's still things I want to do, and I'm still trying to take steps in being the person that I can look and say, you know, that's the person I hope to be. And there's days I look in the mirror and I see that guy. I like the person I see. I'm doing the things I want to do. But there's not, and there's also days I look in the mirror and I think, you know what, who is that guy? You're not anywhere where you need to be. So for me right now, I, I, I walked away from coaching I, when I was uh, in 1995. I left WT to get an administration in Canyon. Uh, then last year, like I was telling the June, uh, January of last year, I walked in my superintendent's office and said, I'm done. I was the athletic director in San Antonio, uh, you know, 11 high schools, you know, 5,000 student athletes, great job, making pretty good money for an athletic director. I said, I'm through. Uh, I give it six months and I, and I walked away because, because a couple of reasons why I did that chip, you know, my mom died at 57 years old, you know, never, never smoked, never drank, never cussed, gets cancer and dies. And I turned 57. I'm 59 now. But when I turned 57, that hit me right between the eyes. I thought, my gosh, Life is yeah. so short. Yeah. Am I doing what I really want to do? And uh, and I wasn't. And I decided, you know what? I'm going to roll the dice and see what happens. And I'm going to sell my house, quit my job, and I'm going to just do what I want to do, which is I want to write. I want I want to I want to like you had said earlier, add value to people's lives. So I'm giving that a run right now. Uh, I'm working a little bit. We have a small ranch here in Brown, so I'm kind of being a cowboy part time, working out there, uh, and uh, I just try. I'm just scratching by, trying to figure out my next move. But uh, a lot of things that you're doing, I'd love to be doing more of. And as you as you know, it's it's a grind. You got to keep after it. And you always got to have fresh ideas. But that's why I like watch. I like following guys like you and Coach DKR and people like that that I get great ideas from because there's things you have a story. We all have stories. Yes, and my sir. story is 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 not as interesting as yours, maybe, but it might it might it might help somebody in their journey. And uh, for me, as I said earlier, I'm trying to find success, and that is just being the person that I hoped that I wish I was, I, that I hope that I am some days. I'm still trying to be that person. I love that. That's good. I love the breakdown of all of those things. How you talked about, you know, your journey and uh, 
still being a work in progress. I think that's it the is sweet a work in progress. Yeah, man. I think that's the that's the sweet spot, coach, <laughs> of being in that place to where I know that, like, yeah, I've done some pretty cool things, but man, it's a whole lot of other things that I could be working on to be better. And I think when we oh, can live yeah. that life, oh man. That's true, you know, and I think a lot of that is just, you know, I mean, for me, it's just looking at myself and, and, and knowing, for, first of all, that I'm going to die, you know, and I love that saying, you know, a, a man realizes he has two lives, and the second one begins when he realizes he only has one, and for me, I'm at, I'm living my second life, I I'm, I know that I'm going to die someday, and I don't know when, but it's important for me, and, and it's become more important as the older I get, is that I'm going to focus on what is important in my life. And my and I, I want to do things that add value to people, that add value to my family, to my friends, and anything else I'm not going to I'm not going to mess with. I'm not going to get caught up in the little things. You know, my dad used to say don't chase the bearded lady. And you know, aside you don't chase those types of things. Stay focused on your goals and don't get caught up in the trivial stuff. Don't get caught up in side shows. Stay focused on what you want to do. I love a story my dad I was playing baseball in the minor leagues. Um, I was really struggling. I mean, I was hitting like a buck fifty. I was horrible. Couldn't get a hit to save my life. And I called my dad one night, and uh, I was whining. I can't get a break, Dad. I can't end up dead. He, and he said, Todd, now I'll, I'll use a different word since we got – I'm not sure who's watching. He said, Todd, <laughs> he goes, you got to be like the coal miner. He says, the reason that coal miner wears that light on his butt – and not on, on his head, not on his butt. It's to see where he's going, not where he's been. And I've always remembered that. You know, the reason that Komana wears that light on his head and not his butt is to see where he's going and not where he's been. And that little short statement he shared with me has really carried me through a lot of adversity because you just cannot look back. You can't look back and you can't bring up the past. So for me, in my journey right now, I'm not looking back. You know, I'm going to make mistakes, count on it, but I'm going to learn from them. And, uh, and again, like we said earlier, you, I mean, we're all going to die. So get busy living. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> there you go. Well, Coach, what are what are three things uh, you've accomplished in your life that you're proud of? You know, I, I saw that question you sent, and I, and I honestly, I couldn't think of three things. I think I'll, I will tell you some things professionally that one thing professionally that I, that I feel really good about is, and something you and I have talked about before is. Uh, we got on, we got on uh, the, the the cast here is that uh, when I was an athletic director in San Antonio ISD, uh, our superintendent called me one night and said, "Hey, Coach I, we're gonna we're canceling athletics for the next three months. You know, we're and we're and we're we're halfway through volleyball season. We're three games deep in the football season. We got mm. you know middle school going on. We got everything you know cross country. All this is going on, and I had to rally. I had to figure out right, what do I do now? How do I handle this? And I had to I had to really and I didn't sit back and think, oh, I saw that PowerPoint back in college. It's going to help me. There, there was no training on COVID in college. Yeah, we didn't yeah, get what yeah. to do in a pandemic 101. So I had to really sit back and think, all right, what do I do? So what I did is I, I thought about the people that I have worked for, the leaders in my life that I admire. I think, what would they do? What would my former boss do? What would my, you know, Dr. Pettis do? What would Mr. Waters do? What would Coach Willie Hall do? What would they do in this situation? And I just kind of thought about how would they handle it. And I called my staff together. I had five assistant ADs. I called them all together. Uh, well, I texted them all, hey, we're going to get together first thing tomorrow. We're going to figure this out. And we got together and we figured it out. And I think professionally for me, uh, and nobody knows this really, and I never have talked about it, but for me professionally, my greatest achievement, I think, was getting our district through COVID and keeping it together. You know, we were able to keep our kids together. We were able to keep our coaches together. And it took a lot of work, emotional and physical, and a lot of mental a lot of mental strain, a lot of nights staying up thinking, how can I keep my coaches and how can we keep our kids engaged? And we got our school district through, we got our athletic department through that. And our numbers didn't drop. They actually were stronger after COVID and our rosters than we were prior to COVID. So, and nobody knows that except for me, but I will tell you. If I had to say one thing I did right in my career as an athletic director is I helped, I led, and I had some great people working with me, but I helped significantly get our district through COVID and survive that disaster. And that, that it was just a gut wrenching for our kids and our coaches and our teachers. But I was able to get us through that, not just me, but I felt like I was a, I played an important role in that. So in that respect, uh, uh, professionally, I would have to say, 
that was probably my greatest achievement was getting San Antonio ISD through COVID and uh, and coming out on the other end stronger than we were before. That was big. There's one. I can't think of two others other than being, you know, my grandkids and my and my children and and uh, and the mother of my children, my best friend. So, but uh, but I will tell you, I think something. I just I've written three books. You know, you know, and you've written books. It's not easy, you know, and that's a grind. You have to write every day, and every day you got to do something every day. So I've written three books, and uh, my my most recent book, Be a Spud, same person up or down. It's a lot of life stories that I've learned from other people. And it's been a good book for me. It's been something I've shared a lot and people have used a lot. So that's been a neat thing for me personally uh, to, to have written that book and, and have success with it and have people hey, say, hey, I read your book. I, I was influenced. I was in, I was encouraged, whatever it might be. That's always a good thing to hear. So but, you know, a third thing, I don't know. That's just hard to say. I'm, I'm just too lucky. I'm, I'm too lucky to be counting those, I guess. So good, Coach. Like, I think, uh, you know, I, I wholeheartedly agree with you on, like, the whole like the whole COVID thing. Like, you know, like you said, there's some things, like, you learn, like, they train in classes, but nobody had ever seen. And I've had some talks yeah. with some ADs as well. Like, you know, you think about it, like, typically when you have things happen, you know, you'll call those people, like, you know, that has have experienced those things. Like, boom, sure. hey, you know, coach, how'd you do this yeah. when you had this? How did y'all handle that? There was nobody there. <laughs> <laughs> nobody knew. The government, you, nobody knew. And we were yeah. just trying to figure it out. And, and of course, you know, uh, just like every, our main concern was our safety. Yes. And, uh, you know, I'm not a doctor. I, so if I was yeah. told to wear a mask and walk on my hands, that's what I did. No, I'm going to do you that. Know? Yeah. And uh, I, I didn't know. It, it was the safety of our kids. But, again, I think getting through that and, and navigating that with administration, getting our, get, being able to maintain our rosters at the varsity level, you yeah. know, and figuring out the workouts and the Zoom practices and the virtual. It was just it was we all know how crazy it was. But I will tell you, it hit poverty school districts harder than anywhere else. Mm -hmm. It seemed like some school districts didn't have COVID at all. They were they, they continued to play and and uh, they didn't they didn't shut down school or anything. But we shut down everything. And uh, and it was and it was the right thing to do at the time. It was the right thing to do at the time. That's good. Well, Coach, as we close, I love for you to get an opportunity to share with the audience where they can go follow you, check you out, and get those books. Oh, yeah. Well, again, you know, uh, I appreciate, again, you taking the time to visit with me. And and uh, I could talk for hours about – and I will tell you, you know, my, I, I have an Instagram account. It's it's called, it's a Coach and Cash. I have a dog named Cash, and it's he and I. And every, every week I, I'll post my – uh, I, I write a weekly column for brownwoodnews.com. Every week I post my column on my Instagram account and also my LinkedIn account. And also you can go to my website, www.coachhowie.com or something like that. It's, it's, it's in that area. You can find me pretty easy through my Instagram account or my LinkedIn account. And, uh, you know, and the chip, it goes back to what you talked about earlier. You know, I've written these books not to tell people how to live their life. I've written these books to tell people how others have helped me learn to live my life and just trying to add value to people. And that's really, in the end, that's what, I, you know, and I, and I go back to your question about success and, uh, you know, I've won championships, like I said, and, and I've had some great positions in, in education and I've had a lot of, a lot of achievements, but I'm still working on the success part. I still want to be able to look back one day and say, you know what, I was exactly the person that I hoped to be. And uh, that's success for me right there. And I'm still working on that. You know, Coach, as I, as I hear you say that, you know, there, there's one word that I have in response to that definition that you gave to success. And that word is boom. <laughs> that's a good let's, word. Give me a, let's give me a go. shirt and a hat. It's boom on it. <laughs> let's go. Well, I appreciate you, Chip. Yeah, well, yes, I appreciate sir. you. I really enjoy watching your stuff. I mean, you, you're you, great for what you do. And, you know, Thank God's you got so great much. things in store for you. And, you know, and I think we, I think long, I mean, here's the deal, man. You are sincere. You are sincere. Yes, and that's what the difference yes, is. And you can tell who's sincere and you can tell who's just repeating somebody else's stuff. You're sincere you, from your heart. So that's why I enjoy following you. And I wish you the best of luck, man. Again, thanks me again for having me on your show. Yes, sir. Thank you. Love your work as Appreciate well. It, uh, and, you know, I'll just share this uh, little secret with the audience before we get off. Man, I was looking forward to seeing the hat. <laughs> I know. I feel better. I should have worn my Stetson now, man. I didn't bring it. 
but uh, like but we're gonna connect, and I'm okay. gonna see that in person. Okay. Yeah, you'll see it. You just look for it. All, All right. right. Well, Thanks well, again. Thank you, I Coach. You. Yes, sir. And uh-huh. thank you guys for That's checking out this episode. We'll see you next time. God bless. Go get it.